Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here looking at a little glimpse into what could be a Henry M. Jackson presidency in 1973. So, America Rising. Friends, Americans, I stand before you today not only as president, president of the U.S., but as a symbol of what it stands for. I have always believed that America is and forever shall be the home of democracy, not a hotbed of extremism nor hatred. Now inaugurated, I see that my belief was correct today. We celebrate not the victory of a single party or ideology, but our freedoms as Americans and freedoms yet to, cover, yet to come. For I have sworn both before God and the nation I so dearly love the same oath our forebears have taken for centuries now. However, in the year of our Lord, 1972, the world is not as it was those two centuries ago. Evil powers have grown across the world, and America stands as the only power not to fall to their inexorable march of hatred. I say unto you, America, that we will continue to stand, we will continue to fight for liberty as our forefathers did for so long. We shall never forget that we are the heirs of the revolution, heirs of freedom's torch bearers. Let the world know that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans, one bo ones born in this century, tempered by victory and disciplined through defeat. This generation is proud of its heritage and, as with its predecessor, will continually prove unwilling to allow human rights and civil liberties to which our nation has always been committed, to be taken away from the peoples of the world. Let all foreign and otherwise know that America will support her allies, aid the downtrodden, and strike at the evil, all in the defense of liberty. I and all America pledge this. And let's begin with his first focus, in which there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 focuses that are each 10 days long. So literally 100 days worth of content. The Jackson Presidency. Henry M. Scoop. Jackson, a native Washingtonian who was denied service to his country during the 40s by the dreadful Democrats, has managed to claw his way to the West Wing of the White House, representing the shining ambitions of the central branch of the NPP in his desire to forge America into a new progressive and powerful state at the entrance of the new decade. To describe President Jackson's ambitions and desires for the new administration would be uh, would take quite a while to detail the intricacies of the politician's mind, and so he's taken the liberty to summarize its brief for all to hear. Bombs and welfare, yes. It may take some time and money to get there, but America will soon be rid of extremists who pull and tear at the seams of the Constitution and be able to walk forward with the power of the military at her fingertips, and a well-off American populace standing there to support her in all she does. Here's to the next four years, everybody. Political power, stability, and the seeds that sprouted scoop. So, to get Jackson, I believe I remember I went with Glenn, President Glenn, and actually, if you look over here, we got quite a bit of an annual deficit. Oh well. Henry Jackson inaugurated as the President of the United States. It's time to put Japan back in their place. It has been praised in OFN, but less so in Germany and least of all, Japan. Poorly received by the more extreme elements of the NPP, notably the L of the left NPP and the Yaki's. America will not express, ex embrace extremism for the sake of survival. So, we shall see what Mr. Scoop has for us. The seeds that sprouted Scoop. Frost. Frost crawled its way across the windows of the Oval Office as President Henry Scoop Jackson looked out upon D.C. Bearing a warming cup of coffee, sat upon the beautifully carved and ancient desk. Surprising now. For our President Jackson had known the chill of Frost since his birth as a Washingtonian along the east coast of the U.S. Enlightening, of course, as Jackson dwelled upon the sources of beliefs and ideas that had spawned throughout his life. From birth to a swearing upon the Bible, sure, when you look at the America of today, you can see all the scars of pushing and pulling from partisan politics, of course, but beneath all that, it was a poor African-American he drove past through the city of Everett, who constantly shivered from frost by any other name, just as frigid. It was veterans and soldiers he shook hands with, talking about the stories of desperation and the fight for the country they endured as they fought through the Second World War in the Pacific and England for, for the young, or for the younger ones, the plains and savannas of Africa. Hope was what inspired him. He knew it was possible for this amazing country to be helped even more. No matter how many soldiers or dollars it took, dollars were what fed the hungry, clothed the naked, cared for the sick, and sheltered the homeless, while soldiers were what stood the wall for America on the front lines and made sure the fascists out there didn't take one more goddamn step forward. A car's lights passing by the wet morning's dew shook the president back to reality as his hands grasped his mug of coffee, bringing it to his lips. America needed help, to be sure. But its core was golden, and it's time for him to take a stand and ask what he can do for this country after all. He knew that he was the man to do it. Red, white, and blue, as it always should be, and I just realized we still have Jim Crow. Woo, and Jackson was elected. Cool. Meet the Chiefs. President Jackson was elected in no small part because of the pledge, or his pledge, to support the U.S. military through thick and thin. After all, in the Senate, there was a strident hawk whose military budget requests were legendarily vast. The Joint Chiefs of Staff are surely the experts on what the branches of the military need to thrive in this new decade. Our administration will meet with them and work to improve the U.S. military through any and all means. Very cool. Research doesn't really matter, but we'll choose something cool, such as armor for the SPAA armor upgrade. This one? Takes too long, but oh well. 
81 billion? Oof. Slash, slash. And even though we're not building too much, let's see. We have the English military command because England was cooed by Montgomery. Quite conservative or despot. No, no. They're quite despot. They have a lot of support for the conservative democracy. Wow. But meet the chiefs. A hot seat in a hotter world. You know, I'm trying to cut costs around here for the sake of the country, so I scaled back the president's chef team for some Dunkin' Donuts instead. Hope that works. Besides, what that wheat stuff they brought me sucked, President Jackson said, earning a stream of chuckles and laughs from members of his State Department and Department of Defense. The men and women in the room began to laugh as they finished their early morning breakfast, shaking hands with the president. Now, 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 let's get started in this meeting. As I'm sure you're all aware, the National Progressive Party gets elections for promises of change and for promising a better, stronger America since it needs it now more than ever, with the Japanese and Germans nipping at our heels. So, we gotta show them what we stand for. Everything that gets done in this room, every decision made, every hand shook, every thought that passes through our mind has to be, uh, has to back one principle. Evil must and will be met with force. There's no room for detente. When the people we have to work with have butchered and beheaded the fathers and grandfathers of the families of Americans out there, and there's no way in heck that I could respect myself for shaking hands with a Nazi or Imperial. This goes for all of you, by the way. Church, you're leading the Department of State, and I want you to make sure that every diplomat, ambassador, and embassy out there knows that we aren't going to allow it to be the going to be the kid that gets shoved around in the world anymore. Admiral Burke, you're in charge of the Department of Defense, and rest assured, those brave sons of America out there aren't going to be forgotten about. We're not going to leave a single soldier, sailor, airman, or marine uncared for, and in exchange we're going to be making sure that they hoist the stars and stripes wherever we can. We're not taking one step back, ladies and gentlemen, not at all. With a few handshakes and nods, everyone went back off to work. Jackson knew in his heart that America wasn't going to be backing down for the next four years. It's not just our job, it's our duty. Strike the FR. And the MPB has relied upon its far-right branch since the beginning. And in terms of national defense and foreign policy, our faction overlaps with theirs significantly. However, the faction isn't always reliable at times. They're outright opposed to our policy initiatives. But our administration's influence on Capitol Hill could help change this. Our congressional liaisons will lean on leadership, getting them to move troublesome far-right congresspeople off to, of important committees, snubbing them at caucus meetings, and using a dozen other tactics to cut the far-right's influence from the halls of power. We shall weaken the influence of the far-right of the party, However, it'll come at the cost of the overall NPP support, as you can see. Well, the Nazis did a lot of work, Borman did, and, and Ossan as well. Hmm. Anyway, Siberian Republic. This is very similar to my, uh, Yaki teaser that I've, I've done before as well, so. <clears throat> Strike the far right. Uh, we'll talk about that, but let's wolf up for the people. Wolf War has always been a tricky spot in terms of legislation for the U.S., as some of the harshest critics on the right would proclaim that such actions would spur an economic meltdown while making our citizens lazy. However, one thing is for sure of all people. They want to feel happy and cared for by the government, and by God, we'll make it happen. Across the country, the poor and hungry continue to scrounge for what they can, scrambling at the bit to make ends meet and eating the scraps that have been left for them. This cannot do, this will not do, for we are America, we the people, for the people. Sure, the economy has always been a delicate balancing act since the end of the Second World War, but we have grown plenty since those days too. And it is our intention to prioritize for the lower classes of our country over the banks and in stock markets. Frankfurt awaits. MPP looks better in the northern states. Don't mind me, we just currently have, um, <clears throat> military spending has an apocalyptic nuclear stockpile. That's all. And civilian, civilian spending is pretty high, too. Mostly because, actually, of the oil prices, I believe. I don't know, President Glenn spent a lot of money. we got a really big nuclear arsenal. But as long as the annual GDP growth is higher than the debt, whatever, right? Look at that arsenal. Apocalyptic. It's going up by 5.18 every month. I love it. Frankfurt awaits. You really think we're going to... They're going to like us out there, sir. I'll be frank, I'm coming from the area. Southerners can catch a whiff of fire when it comes to talk of welfare and social programs, sir. Vice President McMath says he sat next to the President McMath. I want you to know something. I wanted to do my darndest to out fight out there and knock the heck out of those dudes who stood up against the country. And now I know you got that chance, so trust me when I say this now, more than ever, we got to fight, General. Now, presenting the man himself, President Jackson, on the future of helping Americans in his presidency, the governor of Kentucky said, before shaking hands with the president as the crowd came to a roar, Good evening, everyone, and thank you for welcoming me to the beautiful countryside of Kentucky. Now, I want you all to know something, and recognizing the greatness of your state and all Kentuckians within, your state motto comes to mind, United we stand, divided we fall. Now, the very power of the statement calls to mind some of the fights this country has been having within itself. However, I swear upon here now, that this country is as great as it ever has been, and may if it need, may need your help. That's why I call upon the bluegrass states help in moving forward and helping pick up those who have fallen down on the luck in this country, so that everyone is ready and able to bring about a newer and brighter day for the USA. 
I understand some of Ray's criticisms and concerns for the cost and whatnot, but mark me, Kentucky, it is our duty, both civil and moral, to stand shoulder and shoulder with your fellow Americans, and the only way we can guarantee this is by helping those who they suffer no matter the cost. The rest of the night was consumed with a mix of glamour and promises as far as Vice President McMath was concerned. Sure, he looked into the audience and found his fair share of frowns and scowls. Nevertheless, he smiled, knowing darn well the applause that surrounded those fools. Together, full America. Actually, Sid McMath is our head of government, our vice president. It's cool. A right now to privilege. Oftentimes, American conservatives will speak about social welfare programs as if there's something to be earned. Our administration vehemently disagrees with this notion. The American people deserve a safety net that all can benefit from, and our ad administration will work to sell that idea through speeches and ad campaigns and grassroots organizing. <clears throat> In our America, everyone should be able to reach their potential free from fear, depri de deprivation, or precarity. My apologies. Poverty goes better up, and expenses will rise. Well, that's no problem with me. We already have a lot of debt anyways. Whatever. And what's after right? Not a privilege. Context in the unions. America's progressive unions have always been an integral part of the political coalition. The members vote for us, their executives donate to us, and their endorsements have helped us or helped our candidates in hundreds of races across the country. We'll need their support again if our agenda is to succeed. Let's have our liaisons reach out uh, to the leadership of the unions like the UAW to advance our administration's priorities and keep our nation, our union, support strong. Chris Popularity will increase in heavily industrialized states, uh, which is pretty much every single state by now, and industrial equipment, societal development begin to slowly improve mole and mole. Already looking pretty good. Do we not get another event? Will we not? Oh, I guess not. Cool. I guess the two snakes. While much of the MPP is made up of its far right and social democratic factions, there are those at both ends of the party who go far beyond the mainstream. There are the Nazi sympathizing Yaquis and the outright socialists and communists of the NPP left. We need to shut them out of the party and make it clear that this sort of destructive extremism has no place in the American government. God help us if they ever get near the reins of power. We will work to eliminate the extremist wings of the party, and I really like that they put the extra over here in dark and brown, and the emist in red. Color coordinating, wow. Why we fight? After all the blood and treasure lost in the wars of the 1960s, America and the world needs to know why we have a military. The U.S. Armed Forces represent the best of us, standing for freedom and justice in a world so often left wanting for it. While well, the Pentagon start providing assistance to all sorts of movie and television studios while simultaneously expanding our direct public relations strategy, America's military might well be known throughout the world in a new way in the 1970s, and if war comes to America, our people will know why we fight. And we get the event lunch. In increase support from those states tightly bound to the military. Death, the Supreme Court would like to read about this, go right ahead, but... It's, it is what it is, an unfortunate passing of such an individual. Very important an individual. Turn on the hose. Oh, ooh, and don't worry about this one. The integration quota was from Glenn, or even maybe the person before him, so... Cool. <laughs> integration quotas. Turn on the hose. We live in an age of technological marvels and strategic opportunity. Everything from satellites to computers to laser-guided munitions will allow our military to achieve incredible things in the field of battle. We'd have a more modern, professional, and capable military will need to invest. Officers and specialists will have to be trained. New weapon systems have to be more procured. And all of this will cost quite a bit of money. Fortunately, we were elected with a mandate to expand defense funding. The Pentagon will have all the money it could ask for to build the fighting force of the future and lunch. Every Friday, the cafeteria of the mid-sized graphic image studio is just bustling with activity. Dozens of young creatives enjoy the brief period of recreational time and eagerly yearn for the long-awaited weekend. The food's good, too. Today, a selection of sandwiches coupled with complimentary salads got served. At one table, Drew White sat with his colleague Edward Andrews and enjoyed his well-deserved lunch break. Turned to Edward, he attempted to and in instigate some small talk. I gotta say, this egg sandwich is pretty darn tasty anyway. How's the progress on the new posters? Heard that you apparently had some really fantastic ideas for them. Edward could muster nothing but a tired shrug. For a moment, it seemed like he would say nothing at all, but then the words just started to pour out of him like water from an overpressurized hose. Oh, I'm almost done with them. It's just the same thing over and over, you know. The Japanese octopus spreads its tentacles all over the Pacific is a classic motive, and then you have a scary skull wearing one of those Nazi hats lately. I even combined these two to create a Nazi skull with tentacles coming out of its holes. It's pretty cliche clinched or cliched at this point, but it gets the people going, I guess. He paused for a few seconds, lowered his voice to a barely audible mutter, and continued. This whole project is just so utterly depressive. When I went to college and got my degree in graphic design, I wanted to be a visionary. I wanted to design groundbreaking masterpieces that make people reassess how they view life itself. Now I'm reduced to some kind of factory monkey pumping out the same three motives to whip the masses into a warmongering frenzy. I'm nothing but a discount Goebbels, and I really despise myself for it. 
Silence. Drew, who has never been good at com comforting people, attempted to defuse the situation. Well, I <clears throat> understand your problems, buddy. Try eating one of them egg sandwiches. Maybe that'll make you feel better. Maybe it will. Maybe it will. And the Army modernization programs. I love bombs and welfare, man. The U.S. Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps all stand as the building blocks for Lady Liberty Sword and Shield against a German eagle to the east. And the Rising Sun's grasp across the Pacific. For years, they have recovered proudly and strongly from the sinking defeat of the Second World War and has helped promise us a future for freedom, liberty, justice for all. However, it is undeniable that the sword can be sharpened and the shield can be bolstered. Thus, it's time to introduce a bill to Congress that will handle two of America's biggest issues, education and military quality, the Army Modernization Program, the AMP. With that program in effect, better education standards will be coupled with improved and intensified training methods for members of the U.S. Army and may soon be expanded to include all branches of the military. With hope, we will be able to expand the boost in education towards all American American public for the sake of a better tomorrow. After all, smarter people make smart better, better and smarter soldiers, right? Voting on the program will commence. Well... Let's see, we got the CIA over here, and that is the last... Oh, we still have see we did the Glenn stuff, Mission Control, political landscape. Yeah, everything has pretty much collapsed. And it looks like the Army Modernization Program is probably going to pass with 26 out of 44 Republicans, 19 out of 48 Democrats, and all six of our Senators' party members. I'm not doing math right now in my head, but it looks like about 51, right? Let's see, six? No, no, wait. Ooh, that, that's not enough. Oh, hold on. Well, we can talk with Democrats, maybe. And if this isn't passed, well, then I will make sure that we pass very soon. 25. No, that is 25 plus 26 is usually 51. Scottish nominee. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, let's see. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Let's go with a liberal option. Cutting a deal. And we had, we obviously have walls here, too. We got one day left. And that is really close. 51. Wow, look at that. Friends, help each other out. Adi Hoggard, look out in the, into the field with the sun rolling down as a beautiful red shade dawned upon the sky with the day coming to a close above the lush green fields of Quantico, Virginia. They say the program is going to help out all the active and reserve members of the military and help us, or help out veterans as well. They even say it's going to help our, their kids. I mean, crud, what a way to kick off the end of the senior year, you know? Adi and a few other friends there, Jody Swain, Cliff... Haynes and Roy Norris. Everyone perked up at Adi's words except for Roy. <sighs> yeah. Y'all get to enjoy y'all's lives in college. I get it. And guess who gets to work all of the next year? Roy said, lighting a cigarette while laughing. Hey, lay off, Roy. Things are looking up for all of us. That's all, Cliff said. Of course you'd say that, you hope a little dude. Everyone's lives are as perfect as a shining pupil. Boot-looking military brats you all are. Roy said, squinting at Cliff. Adi looked back, seeing Jody's face meet the ground as memories of her cry of her crying to him about her father being caught up in an artillery strike near Boomfontein, and the horror he saw as he saw her dad resting in a hospital talking to Jody, missing an arm and having half of his face charred. Adi knew that Roy had it tough at home sometimes, and all of them had suffered, but Adi realized he decided to make a choice. At that moment, he didn't care. Adi's fist cracked against Roy's nose, sending a splatter of blood and dropping Roy to the ground. What the F is wrong with you? God, you're all nuts, he said, clutching his nose while flicking the cigarette at Adi before he stormed off. The sting of regret pinched Audie's heart in that moment, but when he turned and saw Jody cleaning off that tear going down her face and Cliff giving him a slight, slight smirk, Audie had an entirely different thought altogether. Come on, y'all, let's get some milkshakes. We will gain increased support from those states tightly bound to the military. Place combat schooling with advanced training methods, so it seems like it will pass. If you have 51 out of 100 senators, usually that will probably pass. Which, which you can see on screen those effects that give us public education with subsidized higher, higher education. Awesome, but unfortunately, that was literally already 100 days of content for President Scoop Jackson. Now, we could have done this and failed the vote, but I don't think we really want to see Mr. Smiling Scoop Jackson fail. But regardless, if you enjoyed this little video, uh, consider leaving a like. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow in a different video. Have a great rest of your day.